So this is the uh, <clears throat> beginning of this retreat and uh, we'll do some uh, Parita chanting which is uh, chanting all the uh, wise teachings and blessings of the Lord Buddha to bless all of you and support you on this uh, retreat during the, this next week. And then after that, we we'll, uh, take the uh, eight precepts, and uh, there on then uh, we'll have the noble silence as part of the um, <clears throat> uh, agreement on how to behave during this retreat. And then we'll uh, give it some kind of reflection. And then tomorrow morning, I think we meet at uh, 5.30. And we can chant Parita. Hmm? You can keep the microphone because the sound is very dead. Right? Okay. Ajahn Chandrasir is going to invite all the benevolent uh, forces in the universe to bear witness to this moment. <clears throat> and also dedicating this for Mark Poncella, whose father died just recently. He had to leave. And he's leaving the retreat to attend uh, his father's funeral. Chita paritang panantu Sage kame charupe girisikaratate chantalike vimane Diperate chagame taruvanagahane gehawa tumhike te Uma chayanto dewa jalatala visame yaka kanda banaga Titanta santike yamuni warawachanang sada wome sunantu Dhamma sawana kalo ayang badanta Dhamma sawana kalo hayang padanta Dhamma sawana kalo hayang padanta Namo tasa bhagavato anahanto Dhamma dhambut Nasa namo dha sabhagavato arahato zamma zambut Nasa namo dha sabhagavato arahato zamma zambut Natsa Buddhang Sarananga Chami Namang Sarananga Chami Sangang Sarananga Chami Dutiyam Piburnang Sarananga Chami Dutiyam Pidamang Sarananga Mi dutiyam pi sankhaṁ saranaṁ gacchā Mi dhatiyam pi murnhaṁ saranaṁ gacchā Mi dhatiyam pi dhammaṁ saranaṁ gacchā Dhatiyam pi sankhaṁ saranaṁ gacchā 
ಅಸೇವನಾಜಾಲಾಂಗೇನಾಮೋಮೋಮೋಜಗೋ ಸಮಿಜಾಮೋಮೋಮೋಮೋಮೋಮೋಮೋಮೋಮೋಮೋಮೋಮೋಮೋಮೋಮೋಮೋಮೋಮೋಮೋಮೋಮೋಮೋ
ไม่นาซาเจนาสวานิโอเดเยสุบายุดามนาซาดาเฮนานิคามิโนโกดามาซาสัมมานิเดปาติบาดามะกังเวทายะลาดามุดานิโบเดยามานาหิดัมบิสังเกรนนังมานิดังเตนัสเจนัสวาดิโหตุกินังโบราณวังนาติสัมภวังเวรานจินายติเกมวสมิงปิชาวิโรลิจันนานิบันติเดรายะดายัมบันติโมหิตัมปิสังเกรัตนังมานิตังเอเดนัสเจนัสวาทิโหตุกรณียมมาดะคุสาลินายานังสันนังมานวิสัมเมจสังโฆขุจจสุขุจจสุวัจจสัมมุทโธอนัตติมานิสันตุสังโฆจสุปารโรจหาปะกิจจสาลหุขะโมนิสันติมตริโยจานิปะโคจหาป
Gavani Savagadu Bhagavada Dhammo Sandi Diko Akaliko Ehi Pasiko Hobanaiko Bhajadang Nida Po Vinyu Hiti Supati Pano Bhagavato Vakasanko Ujjumpati Pano Bhagavato Sa Vakasanko Yampati Pano Bhagavato Sa Vakasanko Sa Miti Pati Pano Bhagavato Sa Vakasanko Yati Tangja Nari Sayukhani Yadam Purisa Bhungalahe Sambhagavato Vakathango Ahunayo Bahunayo Dhaginayo Jaligaraniyo Anurdarang Bhunyake Tanglo Kasanti Mahakaruni Kona Dorinaya Sabamani Nangpur Ridova Barami Sabamador Sambor Dimor Namang Hitena Sachawa Jena Hordu De Jayamangalang Jayanto Bhule Sagyanang Nandivadano Evangdova Vichayo Horhitaya Sujaya Mangale Amarati Dhammalange Sise Madhavi Purkare Visenge Sabha Buddha Nanga Kabhato Vamo Tati Sunanga Dang Sumanga Lang Subhapada Hurdi Dang Sukhanor Samuhurdor Jasuyeda Brahma Jari Subhana Kina Kaya Gamang Vaja Gamang Bhanda Kina Dakinang manogamang banitide matakinapata Kinani kadawana labhanane Matakine bovantukthamba mangalangra Kandusamba nevanasamba burna Vena Sanda Sordi Bhavan Tute Bhavan Tutsa Bhamangalang Rakandu Sabade Vata Sabadamma Nupa Vena Sanda Sordi Bhavan Tute Bhavan Tutsa Bhamangalang Rakandu Sabade Vata Sabasangkanu Bhavena Sadasurti Bhavam Tute explain it first. So it's in the eight precepts in the chanting book. What page? Seventy four.
So this, um, this is the form that we use, the three refuges and the uh, eight precepts. And this is uh, You know, the, the three refuges, to explain that, that is, um, this is very important actually to, to get a kind of a clear idea of how to, uh, what this really means in a practical way, because it, one can just do it perfunctorily, like a parrot, and say, Bhutan Sarnangachami, in Pali. But it actually, you know, its meaning is to take refuge in the Buddha. And the Buddha is only talking about the here and now, the present moment, not about some dead sage, Indian sage, but about Buddha uh, is the consciousness in the present. So we take in mindfulness, we, we, we begin to realize this Buddha, this refuge in Buddha through mindfulness. So it's not a person not taking refuge in, in a person or, or some kind of uh, devana, some kind of uh, energy in the universe or anything like that. It's, it's much more direct, it's not abstract, it's, uh, it really means the knowing, the mindfulness in the present. So this is saying Bhutang Ternangachami is a reminder that be mindful. This Bhutto, this Buddha is awareness, and it's, it's um, not conditioned, it's not about, uh, you know, even religion, it's about uh, being aware, awake. Like each one of us is, is here, and we all think we're awake, but we might be living in our own world, you know, our own scenarios and views and opinions. And so we, we create a world that we live in. Now, to, to be able to get perspective on that world, is the Buddha. The Buddha knows the world. And so that is mindfulness. Or, and so when we say Bhutang Sarnangachami, that's what, what I use it for. Is this, it reminds me not to believe, not to get caught up in my own uh, conditioning, my own feelings or opinions or views. And then the Buddha knows the Dhamma, or the so Dhammang Sarnangachami is uh, truth, uh, ultimate truth, or the truth of the way it is. And truth is here and now. It's not an abstract truth about, you know, some kind of ultimate truth in an abstract way. It's real. It's reality. So the reality of now is is Dhamma, and the Buddha realizes, recognizes Dhamma, or the way it is. So on this retreat, you know, you're, you're awakening to Dhamma, you know, you're, you're opening your, yourself up to reality, rather than just trying to uh, get caught up in views, opinions, solution to personal problems, straightening out the world, uh, solving your family's problems and all the rest that we one can spend the whole retreat just trying to figure out how to how to reshape the world but during this retreat it's not about making a better world but recognizing the world knowing the world as impermanent it arises ceases in our consciousness so in buddhism the the world is about the world we create is not about external planet or anything. It's about uh, with the world that we create out of our ignorance and desires and attachments. So that is, the Buddha knows the world and knows that the world is uh, impermanent. It's a Nietzsche. And the Buddha knows the Amata Dhamma or ultimate, the deathless reality. Uh, and so this is the Buddha recognizes this is a, a rea- the reality of now in which the world arises and ceases. So that's the Dhammadin Sangha, Sankang Sarnangachami. I go to the Sangha, I, to the Sangha, I go for refuge. And that is uh, you and I 
individual human beings practicing the Dhamma. So, I mean, it, it's not about persons. Uh, personality, Sangha implies group, you know, it's not, not about individuals, but about groups. So when we're really taking refuge in the Sangha, we're, you know, developing awareness, recognizing Dhamma, uh, and, and therefore each one of us is also taking refuge in the Sangha as a group. You know, our aim here is to realize Dhamma, to realize truth, to recognize it. It's here and now, it's not something you lack or don't, you know, you've got to get. It's just awakening and recognizing. Now, we're all uh, highly conditioned by our culture, education, uh, our experience of life, uh, and so forth. And these, these affect our, how the world that we create, that we live in. So, uh, you know, these, the, the, we may live in different worlds, have different tastes, different preferences, different attitudes, likes and dislikes. But consciousness is one. We're not, we're not separate consciousnesses. We're sep- we create the separation through our conditioning. I am this person, you are that person. And believing, and this is the ultimate reality, this is our commitment to ourselves, our own world, then we create this division. So in this Buddha Dhamma Sangha, as refuges, we're not, it's not, it's not, even though this is a convention using three refuges, which is a kind of division, it's more of an expedient way of reflecting. So it includes you as a physical human being uh, that is mindful and realizing the Dhamma or the ultimate truth. So it's, it includes all those who practice the Dhamma. So when we say it's the four pairs, the eight kinds of noble beings, these are, this is the one when the morning chanting this is about, uh, you know, real, those who, who recognize the path, the stream, uh, the sotapanna, the, those who, who realize the stream. And we're not really practicing Dhamma till we realize that, till we recognize it. Uh, so we can be... We can we have ideas about how I need to practice and what is the Dhamma, but that's still coming from, from uh, intellectual ideas, from your own ways of defining it and, and personal uh, interpretations. So this emphasis on meditation, on bhati-bhata, or practice, is to awaken consciousness to, you know, where wisdom operates, which is universal, it's not personal or cultural or even religious. It's completely unnatural. So then we take uh, that, the second time you do Dutiyampi, Tatiyampi, and this is a tradition to reaffirm it three times. First time you may just be heedless and say it like a parrot. And second time you have a chance to to really mean it. And third time, you can really, it really sinks in, hopefully. <laughs> and then the, then the eight precepts are about, um, the first one is to refrain from taking life of any living creature. So this is, you know, the, uh, this is, this is a most important precept. I mean, in Especially uh, not taking the life of other human beings. You know, everybody took the first precept in its most coarse interpretation. If every now this is wishful thinking, but if everybody in the world would take the first precept in its most coarse interpretation, not to intentionally kill other human beings, war would stop. But here at, at, uh, uh, at Spirit Rock, we're expanding, expanding that to living creatures. So 
it's respect for life for the uh, insects, birds, and so forth that live here in, in the, the center, not to intentionally, you know, see them and, and kill them. Then, uh, so it's, it's about respecting life uh, and the right to live of other creatures. Then, Adina Dana, undertake the precept to refrain from that which is not given. So we're living in sharing facilities in this center, uh, in your rooms, and you uh, share things, and so the attitude is to to respect the property of the uh, spirit rock, not to misuse it, you, you know, be heedless about it. Uh, not to, and of course, in its most coarse interpretation, not to steal things. But in, in a retreat like this, we're refining it to respect, say, you the person you're sharing your room with, respect their their property, their things, and not just take for granted using things without getting permission. Then Abramacharya is to undertake the precept to refrain from any kind of sexual activity. So during this retreat, there's, um, you know, we, we have sexual uh, bodies and energies that are natural to this uh, state of being human. And so these uh, can still operate even in a meditation retreat but we're not acting on them. So that your relationship to sexual desire is observing, knowing the Buddha's knowing Dhamma rather than, uh, you know, acting on it or just feeling guilty or, uh, uh, you know, feeling guilty about feeling sexual desires. It's about recognizing when, this, when the conditions for this desire arises, uh, and, but we do not act on it in any way. But we observe it, we accept it, we know it. So our refuge is in Buddha, Dhamma, Sangha, rather than in personal views about sexuality or fears and, and, and that that we might have. Then Musa Vada Veramani undertake the precept to refrain from faults and harmful speech, and this is uh, not, you know, not to tell lies or curse or swear or or abuse others, insult, or, or harm others with speech. It's also, uh, we're expanding this to noble silence. Now, noble silence, uh, you notice the word noble. It's not tyrannical silence. So sometimes the noble silence becomes a form of tyranny. You go around telling people to shut up and, and being a tyrant. Uh, you know, get angry with people who, who do talk. And that's a, a tyrannical demand on silence. But noble silence, noble is we take responsibility for speech. Like nobility, when I use this word, it's, I'm taking responsibility for my speech. And, and since this, uh, the attitude of this retreat is silent, then, uh, you know, I'm not... Uh, going to just uh, use the speech, you know, for gossip or, or like, but if something necessary happens, like when interviews and and uh, things happen, then I'm quite willing to speak. So it's a, a mindful using speech mindfully. And Sura Meiraya is I undertake the precept to refrain from consuming intoxicating drinks and drugs, which lead to carelessness. So. Uh, it speaks for itself not to to uh, use a lot of drugs or or not to mention taking uh, uh, intoxicating drinks because we we're really learning to awaken to a consciousness that isn't influenced or affected by uh, chemicals and drugs so you want to develop this awareness with a, with a consciousness that is not being influenced uh, unnecessarily by, by uh, drugs of, or drink. So we want, even if you, you find uh, the going tough and uh, you would like to have a drink or take some kind of drugs, uh, then that's still, bear with it, you know, use it as opportunity to observe to see it in terms of Buddha knowing Dhamma rather than 
uh, you know, uh, thinking that, that it's getting in the way of your practice. Whatever happens to you on this retreat, see it is the way of practicing, of understanding, of knowing, rather than as, uh, you know, as a good retreat or bad retreat, uh, everything has to be just so, otherwise I can't meditate. This is, this is a delusion, this is a world we create about, I need this and I have to have that in order to meditate. That is the, the basic delusion that blocks off stream entry. So whenever that arises, you know, all your views about what you need or like or don't like, observe that. Not to, you know, that you shouldn't have those thoughts, but they are thoughts, they're creations that one attaches to and believes in. And we're looking at them in terms of what they are. They're arising conditions, arising ceasing. We're discerning them in terms of Dhamma rather than in in terms of uh, whether I like or don't like the conditions I'm experiencing. And then Vikala Pochana is uh, undertake the precept to refrain from eating at inappropriate times. So that is another Restraint, usually like in ordinary life, we can, you know, this is a society where we can eat any time we want. We can have munchies and cookies and chips and, and all kinds of things in the, in the fridge. Uh, uh, you know, that when we get least bit upset or frustrated, we can eat something. So see, this, this, is, a, this is another way of, of distracting ourselves that is quite common in an affluent society. So just, you know, the, the designated times for eating, and it's, um, that is to, you know, feel free to eat fully at those times. But to observe yourself, you know, if you're a kind of food addict or sweet, addicted to sweets or whatever, this is a chance to begin to observe this. Not to criticize yourself, it's not a, self criticism but to observe this 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 impulse, this uh, obsessiveness of the that we create about needing something to eat or and and so that you you know and then eating at the designated times. But watching, you know, observing, being the puto, knowing the, the Dhamma. And then the this long one uh, undertake the precepts to refrain from entertainment, beautification, and adornment. So this is agreement on this kind of retreat to not seek distractions with, uh, you know, television or dancing, singing, playing games, dressing up, uh, and doing all the, the things that one uh, is quite enjoys doing in ordinary life, where we seek entertainment and distraction. Uh, and in, in, we want to observe this. We are, our aim during this retreat, it's only a uh, nine-day retreat, is to be the observer. So this, this is a guideline for not to, to dis- seek distract. Or if you do seek distractions, observe this tendency to want to, to seek something to entertain you or distract you in some way or another. And then the last one, Ujjasana Mahasana, Either take the precept to refrain from lying on a high or luxurious sleeping place. So, <laughs> so this means just don't spend the next nine days sleeping. <laughs> so this, these eight precepts are guidelines. They're not, they're not like commandments or rules. It's a very important distinction in a Buddhist uh, terms, oftentimes we see precepts as like Ten Commandments or rules that we have to keep. And, and observe how you do regard precepts, you know, there's a rule that I have to keep. Or I'll be punished if I don't. You know, if I speak, chit-chat with somebody, I should be punished. Or if I eat something, I might be punished for it. And there's a fear conditioning that we can also watch being afraid of breaking a precept because we, we have fear of being punished for breaking a rule. But these are guidelines for, for how we're going to live with each other during this next 10 days. 
and they're to help you with mindfulness. They're not meant to be a kind of intimidating uh, moral commandments that that um, you're going to fail at or that you fear. But there, this is uh, what we're doing is really rising up to a level of awareness. So we're not like children or a military unit that needs, you know, a lot of discipline and and kind of beating you into shape and forcing you to do things. It's it's each one of us is over 20, I assume. You look over 20. <laughs> and <laughs> and you uh, and so we uh, take, you know, we we take for granted that this is we're taking responsibility where you know this is our chance to to use these precepts for you know and see how they affect us and where you know where we you know we don't we want to break them or just observe that tendency to 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 rebel against it or to resist or whatever way that you emotionally react to these be a, be a knower of that it's like this you know, or just be, I'm not going to bother with some of those precepts. So we can pick and choose. You know, I'm going to decide which precepts. I, this is, you know, a kind of rebellious attitude. But where, you know, this Bhutto is a knowing of this, these, these attitudes, these, these emotional reactions we have. And it's not criticizing, not saying there's anything wrong, good or bad about it, but it's like this. The conditioned realm is like this. And when you begin to really appreciate this, you realize the conditioned realm is always dukkha. When you attach to the conditioned realm, you're thrown into the realm of agitation and change and discontentment and unhappiness because that's the nature of the conditioned realm. There's no permanent refuge in the conditioned realm. It's always, everything, you know, eventually leads to uh, its ending, to its loss, to old age, sickness, death. And that's the nature of the conditioned realm. But in this refuge, we're taking refuge in the unconditioned, in reality, not in any changing condition. So when we take the three refuges, Bhutto, Tammo, Sankho, this is taking, you know, what this points to is awareness. Now this is, awareness is the, the very essence of the Buddha Dhamma. And this is the uniqueness of Buddhism as a religion. It's, a, it's this emphasis on awareness, on mindfulness, attentiveness, consciousness with awareness, in which we begin to realize this is our natural, this is our refuge. The deathless, the unconditioned Dhamma is the real. Is real. And, uh, and the conditioned realm is illusory. So we, the worlds we create are illusory. They're illusions that we, we cling to uh, and um, and beca- and suffer from those illusions. So this is just to, to you know you can request these precepts, the refuges and the precepts. This is how I encourage you to to regard them as uh, as uh, helpful conventions for mindfulness. So if you will all. Uh, Request the Three Refuges, page 74, together. You can kneel and put your hands together like this, and then uh, all together say, Mayang Bhante.
Namo tassa bhagavato arahato samma sambuddhasa Namo tassa bhagavato arahato samma sambuddhasa Namo tassa bhagavato arahato samma sambuddhasa Bhutang Saranang Gachami Bhutang Saranang Gachami Dhammang Gachami Dhammang Saranang Gachami Sankhang Saranang Gachami Sankhang Gachami Duty yampi damang sarat nanga chami. Duty yampi sankang sarat nanga chami. Duty yampi putang sarat nanga chami. Dati ampi damang sarat nanga chami. Dati ampi sankang sarat nanga chami. Dati ampi sankang sarat nanga chami. Dati ampi sankang sarat nanga chami. Dati sarana gamanang Bana di bata mera mani seka badang samadhiyami. Adina dana mera mani seka badang samadhiyami. Abramacharya Veratmani Sekabadang Samadhyami Mutsavada Veratmani Sekabadang Samadhyami Sura me raya machabama tatana, where up money, the carbadang samadhiyami. Sura me raya machabadang samadhiyami. Najakita vatita vitsuka dasana Malaganta vilebana tarana mantana viposanatana Vera mani seka badang samadhiyami Uja sayana maha sayana veratmani sekha badang samadhiyami Uja 
now repeat after me, uh, you st- chant this three times. Imani Atasi Kabadani Samadhyami Imani atakti kabadani silena sukatinyanti silena poga sambada silena niputinyanti dasma silang with so tie. So this um, attitude of this retreat is is really one of of uh, you know encouragement. Uh, what I try to do is encourage aware. You can't. I can't force you or make you aware. You know, if I could, I would, but I can't. <laughs> so it's. Uh, but it. Enc- we need encouragement. And uh, this is, to say, this retreat is about encouraging you. And, uh, you know, to trust this awareness. Because on a personal level, we don't tend to trust ourselves very much. We're so confused by our, you know, our emotions and feelings that we, we, don't, uh, we don't develop confidence in anything other than maybe in you know, we hold to some external standard or a teacher or a system or whatever. But the, and we depend, I mean, we, we find our confidence arising through clinging. Well, this kind of confidence is through wisdom. A confidence in awareness, not in what you think or believe or feel or a uh, sense of yourself or your sense of self, you know, being, uh, having no self. Sometimes we, we, we're confused, we don't even know who we are, and we find that distressing. Sometimes we're strongly identified with certain perceptions. They see myself as this and that, and, and very, cling very strongly to perceptions of self. And my confidence lies in believing in these perceptions. But these are always shakeable. Conditioned phenomena always shakes. It's, uh, it's uh, because it is that's its nature is changing, and and then we're in a society that wants to affirm itself all the time as individuals. Uh, so that we're there's always a demand to to assert ourselves as an individual, and this is strongly cultural, uh, you know, here in America, and so this assertion of self, uh, you know, we, we struggle with that, but it still makes us unconfident, even though we might appear that way. The confidence comes through understanding, through wisdom. And, uh, and this is confidence, trust in awareness. And it's something so simple and so natural. It's not a created refined, precious state of consciousness. It's just not recognized. You know, so the, this retreat, hopefully you, you know, those of you, or many of you probably have recognized this, but the encouragement is always to trust it, and to recognize it, to determine, to cultivate awareness in your life, rather than, you know, become a retreat addict. You know, think I can only be aware on retreats. And that you're binding yourself to that limitation. Awareness is no, you know, is not, uh, is not damage. It's even in the mo- in the battlefield or whatever. You know, once you recognize awareness, mindfulness, and sampajanya, or uh, this 
a perception, a perceiving, a kind of embracing conscious awareness of the moment, which is inclusive. It's not a divisive separation of anything. So it's completely natural and un, un, uncreated. That's why you can't do it as a willful act. You can't make yourself mindful as a, as a willful act. The attitude towards mindfulness then is, you know, to learning to relax and open, open yourself, relax, watch, be the observer, the puto, be this knowing, the observer, rather than someone trying to get something. These are sometimes meditation is we're always trying to get states, get refined consciousness, get jhanas, get attainments, trying to get rid of defilements, get rid of our egos, get rid of our anger and all these kind of things. And this is, this is uh, you know, the self-operating, you know, always trying to get rid of what you don't like or trying to get something that you want that you don't have. So these are desires that, that we, we, we're blinded by. And so this awakening is awakening to desire. It's not a suppression of it, but recognizing. And this awakened consciousness then is your refuge, what you can trust, and where liberation is. So this that we use this traditional form and the, the three refuges, eight precepts, as a conventional, it's only a conventional form, so it's not, it's not an end in itself, it's merely meant to be a help, skillful means towards awareness. So this is up to each one of us, to how we use this convention for awareness. You know, this is, uh, it's, not, it's not meant for, you know, for, uh, you know, something to be attached to and depend on. It's, it's a skillful means, guidelines. In, in a community, you're agreeing on how to relate to each other and things about not killing or using abusive speech or things like this. But we can still feel it, you know, you might want to murder me at the end of this retreat. And <laughs> I mean, if such a, a thought arises, it's, you know, they say, I've taken the first precept. <laughs> I, I, cannot, I cannot do that. But if you're aware, then you can at least be aware that that is a condition. You know, a, 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 a a feeling you have that arises. And it's like this. Or if you, if you, if you feel guilty, oh, I shouldn't, I, you know, I want to kill Ajahn Sumedho and I shouldn't, then you became, make it more than what it is. You see, you're putting something onto it. I shouldn't, uh, I'm a terrible person for feeling this anger and hatred uh, towards this wise master. <laughs> And, and so I'm a bad person. You've added, you've created something more. Where if, uh, you know, just the feeling of aversion is like this. And this is where you need to trust this, this awareness embraces the feeling. It's not clinging, it's not an embrace like holding and clinging, but it allows a feeling to be what it is. And if you do that, then it nature's to cease. So it's not up to you to get rid of it or to judge it. It's just recognizing, being the Buddha knowing the Dhamma rather than this person with a problem. Now, what this retreat here is something very, uh, you know, this is kind of like spoon feeding. You know, this is. It's a special situation, this beautiful meditation center. Um, everything's laid on for you. You've got, you know, the schedule and you've got uh, meals and cooks and staff that run the place and all kinds of things that are 
happening that you don't even have to think about. It's none of your business. Uh, so this is a, you know, so during this retreat, you know, your, your whole, you know, the, the, the encouragement is to use this retreat for this awareness and beginning to trust it and, and uh, rest in it. And then as you, as you trust it more and more, then it's easy to integrate into uh, ordinary life. You know, it's not, it's not, mindfulness is not dependent on, on having a, such a perfect setup as Spirit Rock. It, and this is a, this is an offering and an opportunity, but this is not how we have to live, you know, in daily life. So it is, uh, you know, a kind of opportunity that's available now that, that you've uh, determined to, to use. And so this is, you know, see it as a, you know, a kind of blessing for you because we do need, uh, sometimes we need to have special situations where we can get perspective, where things aren't, we're not under demand and pressure from family or work or the world around us, where we have our sole uh, kind of encouragement is to be awake and aware of what we're actually feeling. So it is a, you know, a, a very good situation, but it is like special, and we all we can't live in special situations. We have to live in ordinary daily life with traffic jams and families and work and whatnot. And so this is, but these are not obstructions to mindfulness. Families. Uh, professions, work, relationships, if we have trust in awareness, if we have this, this refuge and this, this uh, respect for awareness within ourselves, then we can deal with what we have to in our private life, whatever that might be. Where it's easy to feel I'm, I can't really develop spiritually because of all my responsibilities and duties to the family, raising a family, uh, making a living. And, and so we can convince ourselves that, these, that we can't really develop or practice uh, because of this. This is another thought we create and a belief that we have, that if we grasp this perception, then we become like that. We, you know, we've, we bind ourselves to a condition and we become like that condition. So this is, uh, you know, learning to recognize the unconditioned, the reality of now, awakened attentiveness, and, and, and it's non-critical, it's not saying whatever you're feeling or thinking is right or wrong, but about it's like this. So we use this word, it's like this, or the way it is. It's a, it's a way of observing something without judging it. So if you're feeling terrible, it's like this, terrible is like this. And it, to me, it's like when I do this, this gesture, it's like receiving something. Maybe I don't like it, but this, you know, it's an unpleasant feeling, but it's like this. Then my uh, you know, I can observe it, I can bear with it, I can endure its presence and begin to recognize it's, it's, a, it's, it's not something permanent, it's something, it's, it, it, you know, when you're fully accepting a condition, you're aware of its a Nietzsche, or its changingness, its impermanence. So then you, then this, the mindfulness is, is this discerning, ability to know the condition as the condition and know the unconditioned as the unconditioned. Now if you keep pursuing this, you do, you begin, you know, you, you have moments of insight but then one easily falls back into old patterns and fears and desires and whatnot. But the, but the, this, as you trust yourself more and more, 
you'll see, you don't want to get caught in that anymore. In all the problems and likes and dislikes and that of the world. You, you see, it's just endless and, and uh, pointless to just try to straighten out the world, world all the time. And, uh, and uh, so you, you let go of the world. And then your ability to, to, to be of use in the world is from wisdom, not from personal preference or, or views or opinions or prejudices or, or ideals of how things should be. So in, in this way, it's like at this time in the States, you can see it's a, a very confusing time. The society is, you know, it's not just here, it's everywhere. Very, uh, all over the world is very confused. Nobody knows what they're doing. And, uh, you know, everybody's stumbling around in the dark. And, and that's because there's, wisdom is not a refuge. It's all about views and opinions, about holding on to power, and about, you know, control, and about... Uh, trying to to um, get rid of the evil forces, the axis of evil, uh, to try to annihilate the devil, kill the devil, or or you know try to get rid of your enemies. Uh, so this is a dualistic framework of thought, and uh, so we have we're we're caught in this. At this time, with this, uh, and it, you know, it's a momentum is building up of, of fear conditioning, control, and fear, uh, and then and then the confusion that comes from that. So you know, by your very interest in doing this retreat, your willingness to to do this retreat. I sit here with sore knees and all that for 10 days. <laughs> this is uh, very admirable uh, because you are, you know, this is a way that you can, we can help in, in so many, you know, in the world in general. Not from personal views about how I want the world to be, but through, through breaking through the illusions we create around the world. So then our relationship to the world is compassion, loving kindness, metta karuna, mudita, upeka, the four Brahma Viharas come from this empty consciousness. You know, how we relate to the environment, to other creatures, is then from the purity of consciousness that is manifested through these four uh, Brahma Viharas or sublime abodes. So it's not like you get, you get, you see the dumb, the deathless, and you go into a zombie-like trance, and the world in hell with it. You don't care anymore. <laughs> it's, uh, uh, I'm fed up with it. It's not about uh, negative resignation to misery, or uh, you know, annihilating the world, but knowing the world is the world. So in this way, you know, this, this wisdom is, is the, you can see in the, from my own experience over the past 50 years in, in Buddhism, the amount of growing interest in meditation, because it's greatly needed now here in the States and in, in Europe, everywhere. You, we get invitations all over the place to, to teach meditation. Because it's, a, you know, an awakening of human individuals too, uh, too dhamma or too, you know, uh, this, we all have this impulse or this, this longing, spiritual longing for returning to this natural state of being, which, you know, we, we're so tired of controlling and becoming and, and, uh, getting caught into the endless complexities of fears and desires that, that we create. So we're returning or we're recognizing this very natural 
state that we've forgotten and that we don't create and that is the uncreated and so that's why you can trust it because it's not something dependent on how you're feeling or whether things are going well or not or whether there's you know the world is peaceful or at war So now I will, we can close and um, may you have a good night's sleep and meet here at 5.30. Annamaya no vadakata sadhu karang dadama se sadhu Arahansamma sambuddho bhagava Bhurthang bhagavanthang abhivani Lovakadho bhagavadhanamo namang namasami Supati Panno Bhagavato Savakasanko Sankhanamah